Hi. Today we're going to be talking about uh, gene structure as part of experiment one. But I first want to start about talk talking about genes and what they are. Um, then we can try to figure out how to determine their structure. So, uh, what are genes? So, in eukaryotic organisms, So eukaryotes are organisms like animals, uh, plants, and fungi, uh, things that have a true nucleus, and karyote comes from the word carrion uh, or kernel, uh, so things that have a, a true uh, nucleus. The genome is organized in a different way than in prokaryotes, which are things like bacteria. So we're not going to talk about that case today. We're going to talk about eukaryotes and focus on that. Uh, in um, eukaryotes, a gene is a region in the DNA that codes for something, codes for uh, proteins, or some have other functional uh, properties. Um, but we're going to limit the discussion in th for this class to uh, genes that code for uh, protein and in the genome, uh, that only accounts for a small uh, percentage. Most of the uh, genome you'll find out is kind of a large uh, space of non-coding uh, information that uh, may have different uh, functional aspects. But for genes, um, in eukaryotes, the organized where they themselves have coding areas that if you think about in the terms of uh, proteins, these exons, these regions called exons, code for uh, uh, the protein. That's the part that will be translated into protein. And there's also introns. So we have both exons and introns and eukaryotes. In prokaryotes, again, I just say they only have the exons. So these introns are, if you think about the materials that have been posted on iLearn and uh, other readings you may have done uh, up to this point, that in, the introns are removed in a process called splicing. Um, they're not removed from the DNA. Remember that if we're talking about the con in the greater context of Genetic information transfer, the central dogma, that as many of you have, may have learned it, uh, the introns are removed during the process of splicing um, and do not become part of that protein. So in experiment one, we should think about um, what we're going to use as our example is the actin gene. So the actin gene codes for actin protein. This protein uh, assembles into many uh, structural components in the cell. Um, you're going to find learn more about it um, in other courses, I'm pretty sure, uh, particularly in uh, upper division courses that talk about the cytoskeleton and cell division, you'll learn much more about actin. Um, here we're just using it as an example. It's a, a, because it's uh, commonly found in uh, pretty, virtually every living organism. This actin makes for a good uh, model. Um, and in experiment one, we're going to look at the actin gene structure in four different plants. So in Arabidopsis saliana, in Citrus clementina, so 
Horizon Sativa, and in Zaya Mace. And more commonly known as Mouse Ear Crest, this is a very um, common um, model organism uh, in the plant world. Citrus is, this is a, a lot, the one variety you can think about as a cutie. Uh, these are um, uh, citrus, so you'll see this. Uh, Ariza sativa is rice. And Zama is, is maize. So we're going to look at the actin gene structure in four different plants. Um, so how are we going to determine how it's organized in each one of these plants? Well, we're going to compare genomic DNA to cDNA. Genomic DNA is the DNA that you'll find in uh, the nucleus of these eukaryotes and these plants. Um, the cDNA is not naturally occurring. This is something that we have to synthesize in the laboratory because it serves as a proxy for mRNA. Or uh, in this case, mRNA means mature uh, messenger RNA. Uh, whenever you see this designation, in contrast to pre-mRNA. So in a lab, we can take tissue from a organism, to tissue from a plant, grind it up, and use uh, different chemicals to isolate the RNA, and then use an enzyme called reverse transcriptase to make a copy of this mRNA in um, cDNA form. So now you have a direct comparison of two uh, DNA molecules. These are both double-stranded mole DNA molecules where the only difference, so what happens in, uh, between pre-mRNA and RNA that's crucial to this experiment is sp splicing occurs. So during splicing, the introns are removed. So now you have a transcript of mRNA, this single-stranded RNA molecule that will then be translated into protein. And there's more on that in a, a different um, topic, different uh, lectures that we'll be providing you. Um, so this pre-mRNA molecule you think about its source, constant transcription of genomic DNA. So you transcribe the genomic DNA, make a copy of RNA, uh, pre-mRNA, which will also have, so this is a double-stranded molecule. So I'm going to write DS for double-stranded. It has both exons, which I'm abbreviating as EX, and introns. This pre-mRNA molecule is single-stranded, still has the exons, and the introns. So if you want to keep track of what's 
information is available on each one of these molecules, um, this will help reinforce all the materials that we cover in the uh, genetic information transfer module. Uh, and again, this process, the synthesis of cDNA, is not something that occurs naturally. This is something that we do in vitro or in a test tube in the laboratory. And I know you're uh, all very aware of all the stuff that's going on in the news. The, some of the very earlier assays for detecting the things like the coronavirus take advantage of this technology. Um, so the mRNA then is a single stranded copy. The, spri the splicing has removed the introns, so it only has the exon. And now you're thinking, well, why can't we just compare the mRNA to the genomic DNA, and why do we have to go through this process? Um, and that goes to how we're going to determine the gene structure. So in order to make this comparison, we rely on a, a technique called PCR, or the polymerase chain reaction. So uh, I'll be talking about that in uh, a few minutes. Uh, for that polymerase chain reaction to work, you need double-stranded DNA or a double-stranded template. Uh, if you had a single-stranded, even a single-stranded DNA molecule would not work. Uh, you need a, a complementary uh, region of DNA that you can uh, amplify through PCR. Um, and that's what we're going to do next. So again, just to recap, uh, the reason we're comparing genomic DNA to cDNA in this experiment is so that we can have two template molecules that uh, are available to be amplified through PCR, but only one of them uh, has uh, the exons and the introns, whereas the other one uh, only has the coding information. So by this comparison, we're able to um, figure out how they differ and then construct a visual representation of our uh, gene. And in this case, is the actin gene. But this is true for other genes that um, have uh, exons and introns. Uh, 